Good afternoon, folks. How you doing? Well, we got a project going on here. I got to make my son a nightstand out of three-quarter inch plywood, which I picked up at Home Depot. And he needs to stand for his CPAP machine. A, C a CPAP machine is for sleep apnea, which he has. And uh, he didn't have anything to really put the machine on uh, in his room. So I'm going to make him a little uh, end table, uh, about 20 inches high, because the CPAP machine can't be too high, because water will come back down the hose. Um, anyways, it's going to have two shelves in it. Nothing fancy. I'll show you what wood I've got. I went to Home Depot and bought a um, 24 by 48 piece. In other words, a one quarter sheet of um, furniture grade plywood. Three quarter inch. It's got nice um, surfaces on both sides. And I'm not going to worry about like when I built the entertainment center years ago, I used this uh, um, iron on. Uh, veneer for the edges. I'm not going to get that fussy with it. We're just going to paint it and um, It's not all that big. It's only uh, the sides are nine inches wide by 19 and a quarter high three-quarter plywood top goes on it. So it's 20 inches high So it's it just clears where he has to be um, in his uh, you know, his bed, he won't hit, and hit it. What's the matter, Sammy, huh? Oh, no, you can't go in here. So, um, it cost uh, uh, 20 bucks, I might as well say almost 20, 19 and change, for a f uh, two foot by four foot piece of plywood and I can get everything out of it. Uh, Home Depot charges 50 cents a cut. They give you the first two cuts free. So I figured, well, it's easier for me to ha pay the 50 cents a cut uh, rather than to mess around on my table saw, which is very small, it has a very small top on it. Uh, but there was pieces left over that I'm go I'd be able to do on my table saw um, to make the bottom and the middle shelf. So let's get started on this project now because we haven't got much time. We got a beautiful day here and we want to take advantage of it. All right, I'm going to get the table saw out of the shed. I had to dig a bunch of stuff from in front of it and on top of it. Those four by fours would keep the plywood from blowing away. Uh, that's a uh, Delta. I made a video on that several years back when I got it. It does not have a uh, miter gauge. Uh, when I got it at a yard sale, paid ten dollars for it. So I can't get a miter gauge for that. I can, I can order one. So um, I have to Mickey Mouse it. So that's why I get the wood pre-cut so that I can do my cuts without a miter gauge. Now I have a miter gauge for my eight inch craftsman table saw uh, that I usually that'll fit on this but it's it's short so I can't pull out the miter gauge way out to do a large piece of wood so that's why I have the wood pre-cut makes it a lot easier for me because I don't have a big enough table saw or a, the right miter gauge for that saw enough chattering the dimensions of this is nine inches deep from front to back. That matches his headboard. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to try to do this without dropping everything all over. Well, not going to 
work out too well. well you get the idea. I'm going to put the top on like that. The top is going to overhang about an inch on each end and a half inch on the front. So there's two sides, 19 and a quarter inches long. With the top on it, which is three quarter, it's 20 inches from top, from floor to top, which is just enough height for his, uh, comes up to the top of his mattress actually. But you don't want the uh, machine to be uh, any higher than that. Okay, so when this is built, I want to have a shelf in the middle and a shelf down at the bottom. The bottom shelf will be about an inch off the floor. And when I do the top, I'm not going to round this off with a router because what it's going to do is it's going to bring more of this uh, lamination exposed and I don't want that. I'm not going to get that fussy. I am going to sand it. After all, and then and paint it. I'm not going to uh, stain it. Don't forget this time of the year we're going to probably get cold and, and it's supposed to rain, uh, what, tomorrow or the next day. So I've got to try to get this thing going. And I talk so damn much that I don't get nothing done. Okay, now, so there's two, there's this is the top, there's the sides. The back will be quarter inch Luan. Uh, these two are extra pieces. I'm going to pre-drill, because I've been finishing nails over every single time. I have an 18 gauge brad nailer that one, runs on a compressor, but I'm not dragging out the compressor because I don't have much faith in them things, and uh, I'll just do it the hand, you know, I'll pre-drill this plywood. Uh, well, actually it'll be the top. And when the top comes down, I'll draw a straight line, and I'll pre-drill and I'll put finish nails in it and I've got some uh, Elmer's wood glue right here. That's what I'm going to use. Uh, we only got 14 and a half wide. So, um, I can get I can get two pieces out of that. But So what I'm going to do is I draw a, um, a straight edge, a straight mark. Might as well use this for my measurement. Okay, there's the two sides here. And we'll verify the uh, accuracy of the mark. It's not rocket science, so if it's off a hair, I'm not going to worry about it. We're 18. We're uh, a hair over 18 on this side, and a hair over 18 on this side. So this is going to be the two shelves, bottom and middle. And we're going to put these through the table saw. Okay, this, this uh, mita gauge goes to my Craftsman, which I had for about 35 years. 8 inch table saw. It fits the groove perfectly, but it's very, very short here. And I can't find any aluminum stock that's that dimension. So, it's going to be hairy trying to... I can't pull it back here. And the, the original miter gauge had um, little ears on, on here, so you, it didn't do this number. But I don't have that, so... We'll have to work with what we got. Like I say, I, I got the uh, the rip fence, but I, it didn't come with a miter gauge. So. But I only paid ten dollars for this saw, so let's get started with this. Okay, this is going to be hairy, and I might have to improvise here. See how far I have to pull that out before I can do it? Useless. So. Here's what we're going to do. 
That is what we're going to do. Each one of these shelves is nine inches. The same width as the side. So, you know, in other words, when I put them in. But the cabinet is going to be about 11, let's see, I want the cabinet 12 inches, 12 inches um, wide, and that means the shelves are going to have to be an inch and a half shorter than that. So what I'm going to do is take the rip fence, and I'm going to rip down this way, after I measure it first. So that way I'll have the proper, because the shelves are not, won't fit in this way, they're too long. You'll see what I'm trying to say here. All right, so what I have to do here is each shelf is nine inches wide to match the side pieces, okay? The cabinet itself is going to be 12 inches wide. This board is longer than that, wider than that is I have to cut this off so that we've got ten and a half inches. So ten and a half inches as we put these sides on and if you measure on the outside we've got twelve inches which is what I want. It's got a bolt here for a, a lock handle so it's kind of tough on the uh, on the heel of your hand. Okay. Now, before I cut that, I always double check my measurement from here to here and from here to here. Because they can be off. So I'm 16 and a half inches from the roof fence on the front of the uh, platter or deck or whatever you want to call it. And I'm the same here. Okay, if I can keep this thing from moving, I'm ready to cut it. I can get my, my uh, miter gauge in there without pulling it out too far because I need to make these two cuts here now. So this will be one shelf and this will be the other. I'll come back in a minute. I got to take this off. That thing is almost at the end. So it's going to be uh, kind of a very hairy cut to make here. We're a good inch and a quarter away from the rip fence, so we won't jam up against that. But my miter gauge is my miter gauge is like that. This needs a longer shank on here. Okay, it's made for the other table saw, which was an eight inch, but even then it was short. So you can't do very big pieces. So that's why I had to use um, have them have them cut it. Now I didn't use my head. I could have had them do these cuts, but I was doing everything at Home Depot out of this old goat brain here, and um, I had a brain fart, and I forgot about the shelves. It would have been another um, a dollar to have these two done, but not a big deal. If I had a, a, a better, if I had a longer. Miter gauge, I keep wanting to call it a rip fence. This is the rip fence. Miter gauge, I'd be all set. This is all metal, by the way. This has come off my, like I say, my 8-inch uh, craftsman saw. So, 
Now, this is not going to be easy to do. This is probably, but I don't want to use the, I don't want to use the rip fence to guide me in because that's not how you're supposed to do this. You know, that's dangerous. I have to Mickey Mouse everything. And then there's, then there's play here too, because this is not the right mitre gauge for this saw. Ah. Why is it when somebody sells these things in the yard at a yard sale, they always come without the mitre gauge? All right, I'm going to try to do this. This is not going to be easy, but I'm going to try. If I screw it up, i got to cut another piece. Get you a little better view if that's possible. I gotta make sure we're back. See, to see how much play that is, and I'm holding this thing tight. See how much wobble in that damn thing? Like I say, this ain't made for this table saw. See how accurate these things come out. Well, the length is fine, the width is off, but the width is off from the first cut. It's off the thickness of a blade right here. I don't know if you can see that. This is why I like them. Have I like to have them pre-cut because of the damn. First of all, the saw tabletop is too small. Second of all, the mitre gauge is a stubby. Let's see now. Now we got, um, this is supposed to be nine inches. This is short. This is short nine inches. This one, this one's right on. Okay, it's not a problem because they're both ten and a half inches. So I'm only screwed up front to back by blade width on the nine inch dimension. So one will be down the bottom, this will be in the middle, and then the top will get fastened in. So we're going to start putting this thing together, and we're right on. The ten and a half is right on here. Perfect. It's the nine inch, the width of the sides that I'm off. But it's so little, you're not even going to notice it. But it is off. All right, I'm using these inch and a half finish nails. I don't worry about galvanized because this is inside the house. But I'm going to pre-drill, so we're going to find a drill that's just a hair smaller than these little finish nails here so I can drill through the first piece of wood it, but you can't drill uh, you can't bang them in in the three-quarter inch plywood direct they'll they'll bend over every time so they have to be pre-drilled and you don't want to make the hole too big because the head will not hold 
I'm using a 564 bit. Now these are the bits that break very easy if you're not careful. Only drilling into the first three quarter inch piece of plywood. This is just so I can get my nails started without bending them over and I do this all the time. I always pre-drill. If not, boy, I'll tell you, I'd look like a five-year-old banging nails in. To simplify it, I got both pieces of plywood on top of each other, but we're going to cost do one at a time. This is the bottom of the cabinet, where the bottom shelf is going. So, draw a line here. So we're an eighth of an inch, an uh, inch and an, and an eighth, or thereabouts. I approximate, I do get as close as I can. This is not um, micro precision. So if I can get my dimensions within a eighth of an inch, or preferably a sixteenth of an inch, I'm happy. All right, so both of these pieces are going to be on same way this is the bottom of it the plywood bottom is going to sit on that line so what I'm going to do here and this is the goat way of doing it use the thickness of the plywood draw a straight line here so now we got three quarters of an inch this is we'll do the same on this one Right now, this is where the plywood goes, right there, the center of the plywood. So now we got to split this in half or get the middle approximately. So then we pre drill and we're putting, you know, probably four nails in each one. Now, before I do that, let's get the um center shelf. I think we... center shelf is all you need. We're not going to go putting two shelves in the middle. If he gets uh, two shelves, this is the top of the bottom shelf to the inside top of the cabinet, 17 inches. Half of 17. Oh, the damn math. If it was 16, it would be 8. So I would say 8 and a half. How's that sound? 8 and a half inches. So here is where we want to be. 8 and a half. So we draw both boards here, 8 and a half. And to double check my readings, I always do this. I take the ruler, that's 8 and a half here, and I take it and move it here and it's a hair off. That's the story of my life. It's a hair off. So we split the difference. All right. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. We don't worry about precise. We try to get it as straight as you can. You definitely try to get it, but you know, you got bad eyesight. I'm lucky to be able to do what I do. Now, both pieces are flushed out here, so I can draw a straight edge right across, and that's going to be the center of the plywood for my shelf. Okay? So, at this line, I'll draw, I'll drill the holes for the nails. On this one, I got to make a line about halfway. So, half of three quarters. <laughs> half of three quarters. Well, this looks about right here. I just eyeball it. That looks like about the middle. That looks like about the middle. And that looks like about the middle. I'll tell you, if a carpenter ever saw how I'm doing here, none of you carpenters criticize me, please. After all, I never claimed to be a carpenter. I'm 
damn lucky I can do anything at all. My piss poor eyesight. Okay, so that's the center there. So what we gotta do is drill one, two, three, four in each one. We're gonna mark the nail where I'm gonna be drilling for the nails. We'll come back on this video in a minute here. Okay, so every two inches in a hole. So there's four here, every two inches. So we're gonna pre-drill these. And this will be the inside. When the, when the drill comes through, it may poke through the wood and splinter it. So what I'm going to do is to lay a piece of plywood underneath each one of these as I drill them so that you get a clean hole all the way through when I'm drilling. So you're not going to have the splinters coming out on the exit point where the drill comes out. All right, what I got here is an old piece of pine. I'm not going to go sacrificing those extra pieces over there. So I might want to build something. So this is an old piece of pine. It's not warped, so it'll give me a good base for drilling down. And it just happens to be nine inches wide. <laughs> so that worked out good. So i get my reading glasses on here so I can drill straight. And if I don't break off the bit, my Harbor Freight drill here which is good enough for these sort of things we'll drill down through it's important that I come through the center of the plywood I don't want to don't want to come through on the um, on an angle. Now you see the holes are nice and clean. If I didn't put this board here and I drilled through you'd have wood splintering out and that's the finished side so it's important. And when I bang them in then I'll use wood filler and sand it and paint it. We're not going to stain it and get fussy like that unless I can find a combination stain it has to be like a light oak to match the furniture he's got in there or um, or brown paint 